for the people that know me, they know that I kind of go. I have high energy, and I'm driven, and um, I don't wait for much, and I don't have much in the way of patience. And um, sometimes I think that I needed to go through the times that I went through with the chemo treatments to get me to the place where I needed to be, to be able to rest in God, to find the peace in my heart. be with him, for him to be with me. I'm always on, always doing something. If I'm not doing something, I don't have my calendar filled, I find something to fill it. But during that season, I was going through, this fruit of the Spirit started coming up in my spirit, really abundantly. The love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the gentleness, the faithfulness, and the self-control. And I missed a lot of that. I missed the joy. I, I skipped from the love to the peace, but I missed the joy so much in my life because I was doing too much and trying to be too much instead of enjoying the moments. I was living in the future and I was living in the past, not in the present with the people that were around me where the joy was. And when the people started giving to me and then giving life to me by coming around and helping me and our family, I started learning the joy piece. And it's a journey. And I've got a long way to go, but I've come a long way. You don't have to go through chemo <laughs> to get there, but uh, apparently I did. These lessons are Amazing, amazing gifts of God. The blessing, blessing from chemo has been beyond my understanding. Um, it's been awesome. Um, but it was difficult at the time. And in reflection of the time that I was going through, the decisions that I was trying to make at the time, and the anxiety that was there was uh, off the chart. And I think everybody goes through that when they're facing what I do. The doctors are telling me this. The spiritual giants are telling me that. And, and I'm getting all this input and advice. And now what do I do? Okay, so Dr. Ross is telling me in the next journey is to go down this treatment of what they call interferon. Interferon is this drug that's, it doesn't give you a significantly in increase in chances of survival, but the interferon affects your body very negatively. In fact, they say that it makes you feel like you're, you have fever, chills, flu-like symptoms for a year. And that's the best that they had at the time to uh, treat, inter treat melanoma remnants, if there's any. We were told that interferon was a, a terrible chemotherapy and that, oh, I don't even think 60% would... Um, would even finish out their first month of it. It, it, that we were told that it would make you feel like you had the flu for a year. We had the spiritual people telling us not to um, take the treatment that I was already healed, and I felt like I was already healed. And I didn't feel like that I needed to take the interferon treatment, but I could not get the peace in my heart to decide what I needed to do. So I was asking God, give me a message, give me a sign. I didn't know, we just need help help us. Stephen Furvick is this young pastor full of life and he um, gave a message and I felt like this, this was the message that I needed to receive. And the message was in essence that, that the Israelites took a city in the Old Testament after they had marched all night and God had made the earth stand still. And the message that he had for us is don't expect God to do what he can do until we've marched all night. So here we go down a year of change of life. I mean, it was it was it was minimizing. It was really a, a tough year. That gave me the message that I needed in the peace of my heart, for whatever reason, for me, that I needed to take the interferon treatment. Even though my wife thought that that was not necessary, I didn't think it was necessary either. But I knew it was what God wanted me to do. 
Worship was a big part of the recovery, just letting, soaking into what God had for us. We were listening to music, listening to worship songs to prepare for this journey, this one-year journey through Interferon. And uh, one weekend, we just listened to the Revelation song over and over and over. And we were all prayed up and worshiped up the weekend before that I started my treatments. Each day of my treatment, the, doc, the nurses were shocked that I wasn't feeling really bad the next day. And got three weeks into it. And this three weeks into it, I'm good. I mean, they're, they're looking at me like, I'm, they're shocked that, that uh, they're, they're not feeling the effects of this chemo. And I'm thinking, I got this. This is awesome. This is God's coming through, and I got this. And uh, I started feeling bad. And that was on a Friday, on the, the third week of the treatment. And I started letting in to know how I was feeling. And then Saturday I woke up and I was feeling horrible. And uh, I talked to let her know how bad it was again. And Sunday morning we went to church. I could not stand up in church to sing. And uh, it was just a horrific feeling. And then Monday was my the beginning of my fourth week and the fourth week I uh, went into the my uh, treatment on Monday afternoon came home and was laying prone on the couch and uh, really feeling bad and then this phone rang and this phone rang from a guy that had led me into a deeper understanding about how God would heal me he says hey, hey Alan how you feeling? And I told him. He says, hey, you got to quit complaining. And I said, if you felt this way, you'd complain. And how did you know that I was complaining? <laughs> and he says, open your Bible. So I said, really, Mike, <laughs> I, I, I'm tired. I, I Just tell me. Give me the short version. And he says, open your Bible. And he takes me into a story about how Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt and um, how God gave them these slaves that were in Egypt for so many years, gave them water out of bitter water, then he gave them manna to eat miraculously every day, and then he gave them quail to eat, and each time they would complain about only receiving that for food and water and nour nourishment. And even wanted to the extent to go back to to Egypt to be slaves again. And these slaves marched around looking for the promised land that God had promised them for 40 years. And none of these people that were released that complained about these these uh, these things that God was giving them reached the promised land. And Mike says in a really loud voice, Alan Williams, this is not Mike Murphy calling you. This is the Holy Spirit calling you. If you don't quit complaining, you're never going to reach the promised land. The promised land that God's promised us. The abundant life that he talks about for us. That is on our doorstep if we just go out and get it. To receive it. He's praying, his wife's praying on this iPhone that's sitting on our table. And they're praying, and they're praying for me to be restored. And uh, in that one-hour period of time, the negative side effects went away. It was amazing. And they stayed away for the next 11 months in one week. That's how much more I had to go down this path. And uh, I can't explain it other than it was God. It was. No doubt about it totally relying upon him each day. So I went into this place of every day going in concerned about what I might be receiving to being thankful for what God was giving me through these tubes that were hanging from my body to put this poison in my system to heal me and thanking him for this. I began to understand what God would do and uh, restoring in so many ways. And if he could take away the negative side effects of, of interferon treatment at the level and dosage that I was 
taking it. You could do anything. And um, we started going down and just living. I couldn't understand though. My brain was still scrambled, and I was reading things, but I couldn't understand them. But I could read a Bible, and I could read a biblical understanding or a unveiling in a book of biblical truth, and I could receive the depth of that beyond what I could ever understand before. But in the mornings, I would wake up. If I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning and spend an hour or two um, absorbing the love of God through worship or prayer or whatever else it is, and then start my day, I would have strength for the day. And, but yet if I s slept until 7 o'clock in the morning, I didn't have energy for the day. So I got to learn how to stay in the presence of God and learn how to rely on Him, not just for my life, but for the moment. I began learning to rest in the presence of God. And uh, looking back on things, that was the purpose for chemo, for me, that was m the path that God had for me. I didn't want it. I did not want it. But it was so filling to understand and learn how that I needed to rest in the presence of God every day before I started the day so that I have the energy for the day. In September of 2011, he's after just going to my face and asking God, help me, help me, help me. Because I was still in uh, the remaining effects of the surgery, my left leg was still swollen and I couldn't stand on my feet very long each day and I was in the restaurant business. So I couldn't, that just didn't work and I was going to my, I hit my face and said, God help me, help me, please, um, I need you, I need you. I decided to go. I decided that I wanted to do a bucket list item, and that gave me some hope. I shouldn't have had the energy to go, for sure. The doctor said I was going to be in bed, want to be in bed for a year. And uh, but I had I had to give myself some hope. I had to have something that was a goal that I knew that I couldn't do without God's help. And when I got this going boat, I. Uh, I started going out on the water and I, I would go an hour out on the sculling boat on my own and then I would ask for God's help to get me back. It was my peace on earth. It was my reliance upon God every day, every time that I went out there. And I would do this once or twice per week. And this is in times when our temperature was up over 100 degrees every day. I shouldn't have had the energy. When I got back to the shoreline, I'd roll out of the boat and ball up in cramps, and I'd praise God for getting me back. But when I was out there, you know, I got to spend time with God. It was just me, God, and the water. It was awesome. And it gave me hope. It gave me a purpose for whatever reason. And I think we all need that. Especially in times of struggle. We're trying to build ourselves up, searching for something that's beyond what we can do on our own, to grab something that's greater than ourselves, even if it's a boat, a sculling boat, but it's something I wasn't supposed to do. September 2011, I felt this urging to, to, and he said, trust me, I felt that so big. So I took the stockings, the compression stockings, the doctors told me that I was going to have to wear the rest of my life, and I stopped using this compression machine that would massage my leg to the point where it would move the uh, fluid that my lymph system used to collect that I had no longer in my leg to the rest of my body. So I had no lymph nodes, there was no way that the fluid on my feet and my legs could be transported. And I took off the stockings and, and, and uh, I started going and uh, um, the swelling went down. 
<laughs> How does that happen? <laughs> so I started working more, got back on my feet more. I was on my feet longer than I had before. And this trusting Him happened every day again. I trust you, Lord, I trust you. And I'm, I'm going to let you love me. We're both so grateful that God was able to take something that Satan meant for such harm and devastation and turn it into such good. It's a transformation that I don't know that Alan could have received any other way. Our greatest commandment is to love the Lord with all your heart and the others next is to love others. You can't love others or I can't love others unless I receive the love of God first that was so evident in what he did with me during this chemo treatment and healing. And we can't love others unless we receive, if we have it, unless we have it to give. So he gave it to me so that I could give it. And I'm trying to understand what that is. I don't understand the depth of that, but I'm trying. And I think that's what we're all supposed to do. But love doesn't happen until trust. there's trust first. I can't receive love unless I give it. And I can't receive trust unless I give it. And how that all is intertwined and intermingled with each other has uh, been an amazing spiritual journey. And I look back and say, okay, why, God, did you not take that scrambled brain away from me for a year? Why did I have to go through that year of chemo treatment? And he says, how else am I going to teach you how to rest in my presence and in my life? I wouldn't advise it to anybody else, but it was worth it to go through it. <laughs> um, it's an awesome journey. And we hung on these verses that were Romans 28, Romans um, 8, 28. All things work together for good love, for those who love God, who those are called according to His purpose. And when we receive His love, it, it works. And we have that power and the strength beyond an imagination. The chemo effects started wearing off over the next couple of months or so. And uh, I started getting clarity. The clarity of purpose of life that has gone beyond understanding. I mean, all of a sudden, I had downloads of clarity of what I'm supposed to do next. This is part of it. There's more. There's more for all of us. But I'm in it for what he has for me to give. Um, you know, I want to be all in. The all in that He wants for us to have. The abundance that He has for us. The abundant life. <laughs>